Yes, nothing fancy thinks the Tom Brown tracker knife is definitely overhyped, oversold, overpriced, uh, you name it. I'm going to get to the specifics of the knife in this review. This is a tabletop, i.e., um, actually a computer review. What you're looking at is actually my computer screen. This is the quickest way for me to put this together. I just don't have the time to put this into a movie format record my narration and do it over and over again. I don't have time. So I'm just going to do it this way. I think it'll turn out well and you guys will see the images which will explain my points of view on this. Now again, this is a, a review of the Tom Brown Tracker Knife. I don't have the knife in my possession. I have not used it. However, I've used a lot of survival blades over the years in the woods in all kinds of weather conditions, both in military survival school and out. Um, so I think I have a little bit of background which will help me evaluate the blade, uh, maybe a lot of background, and that's what I want to do. You can see my camera reflection right there in the screen. You might see that occasionally, but that's how it's going to go. So, welcome to Nothing Fancy's Anatomy of Hype, the Tom Brown Tracker Knife. And yes, it is just that. It is an overly hyped knife, and it was due mostly to this movie, which I'm going to talk about and summarize because it's very germane to the subject we're talking about, and that is the capabilities of a knife. The movie is 2003, uh, The Hunted. I actually rented this movie and watched it because I wanted to be, you know, a little bit clued into what it's about. In fact, I just got done checking it out. There's my Netflix copy of it. Um, I'd give this movie maybe three out of five stars just for entertainment value. But in the movie, as you can see him holding there, the antagonist, this dude, his name's Aaron, has a Tom Brown tracker knife. Why is that? Well, because Tom Brown, a survival specialist, was the technical advisor to the movie. So, of course, he's going to put his blades in the movie. Tommy Lee Jones' character's name's LT, and these two square off in a, in a series of encounters. Now, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about the movie, and then I'm going to talk about how they wove the blade into the movie, and they created a very Hollywoodized and stylized impression of the knife, which is based on pretty much nonsense. And I'm going to debunk it. You watch. All right, first, here we go back with uh, Aaron's character. That's the bad guy again, this dude right here. Um, he was an operative for the U.S. government. He's in Kosovo at the beginning of the movie. He witnesses a bunch of atrocities by the Serbians against uh, civilians. And he takes one of them out in a very bloody and gory encounter um, with a knife. And he struggles with that in the movie of how he's going to you know, just uh, deal with the death and the, the blood and the gore that he saw in that encounter. Um, as it turns out, as the movie progresses, we find that he doesn't deal with it so well. He turns, in, he turns into a, basically a maniac, and he needs to be taken out. And who's, who comes to take him out? Well, two dudes dressed as deer hunters are actually government assassins locating him in the woods. Now, if this sounds familiar to you, it might, and I liked it better when I saw it the first time when the movie was called Rambo, because this is a direct ripoff on Rambo. Thank you very much. And if you were to combine the plots of Rambo and The Fugitive, you would have the movie The Hunted. Maybe I'd give it two out of five stars. Not that great of a movie, actually. Um, and it just gets hokier. I mean, here these guys are supposedly government operatives out to take out Aaron's character. And what are they armed with? 30 out 6 hunting rifles with night vision. And they're in a CQB confrontation, i.e. within 20 yards. And they're hunting with a bolt gun, no doubt zeroed in for 100 yards plus. But, you know, Benicio's there. Aaron's character, he's tough. He's got that Tom Brown tracker knife. It comes out, and well, you know the knife's going to win, right? Of course it does. If you recognize this guy, he's the same dude in Cliffhanger. I love his, his he's a great actor. He's playing uh, one of the federal dudes out to get him. And, you know, they're terrified because suddenly we see that Aaron, the bad guy, has just magical abilities with his blade. And he's able to intimidate these guys despite their rugged tenacity and they're willing to fight, but it's just not enough. Because Aaron breaks out his really cool Tom Brown tracker knife and he ends up killing them. Actually, it's even worse. He ends up butchering them. So that was kind of uh, gory. I'm not sure why they had to put that in the storyline, but okay. 
and there we see for the first time in that sequence the Tom Brown Tracker knife. Oddly enough, this is a different knife than he threw into a tree. This is uh, apparently a raw blade. It looks uh, shiny to me. The one that he threw in the tree looked black. Here's a better picture, and we'll see this again. This is a, the production version of the Tom Brown Tracker. Now, as uh, the FBI agents and LT, Tommy Lee Jones' characters, comes to the wood site, the site of the killing of those two agents that unsuccessfully tried to snipe out Aaron, uh, they find this. And here we see the nonsense of the movie. This is where Aaron's character supposedly threw a Tom Brown tracker knife into the wood and produced this amazing hole. This is supposed to be from a hole thrown by this knife. Okay, do you see where we're going with this? How ridiculous this is? They obviously, in the production of the movie, drilled this out using whatever kind of tools. So they had to see air. I'm sure the production assistant said, hey, we really need to see air on there on the other side so we can the audience will really get an idea that this is a deadly, deadly knife. Okay, and I'm sure Tom Brown was probably there saying the same thing. You know, yeah, that's fine. Now, if you're Tom Brown and you're in Idaho, Tom Brown, I don't mean to say anything bad about him. I'm sure he's a great survival instructor, um, but he was a technical advisor on this movie. How would you get away with them having that image? Because you're saying that your knife, one throw, one throw, not chopping, but one throw created that hole. And Tommy Lee Jones' character, LT, looks at it with great concern. Suddenly he knows what up, what, who's he, who he's up against and the kind of weaponry that Aaron has. It's this incredible knife that he has. Okay, and then uh, the movie progresses on and on, and then we find out that Aaron's character is actually a student of Tommy Lee Jones, LT. And he's the one that introduced him to that really cool knife. The Tommy Lee Jones special Tom Brown tracker. And then we see a sequence of them forging the blade out, making it from scratch. Also a flint blade. Not sure why that's uh, so deadly or modern, but it's featured also prominently through the movie. Now, keep in mind, this is Hollywood. Sorry for that. Hollywood is out to sell movies. They're out to sell image. That's what they do. If I'm a director of a movie... I want to create the most engaging movie I can, so I sell tickets. That's where we get into visual looks. In other words, the visual look of a knife. Now, since this movie was pretty much a ripoff on the Rambo genre, in my opinion, they can't very well use a Bowie-style blade, because that's what Rambo had. Remember the Rambo knife? Yeah, they can't do that, so they're probably looking for something different. And they found it in the Tom Brown Tracker Knife. It is visually different. It is visually engaging. It looks interesting. And there's a lot to be said for that when you're a producer. So the movie goes on and we see them at their little survival school. And they're throwing their blades. And they're learning knife fighting techniques. And actually this sequence here, they're actually not using the Tom Brown Tracker. And this is when LT's teaching Aaron how to fight and kill with a blade along with his other students. They're actually using K-Bar knives, and actually rubber too. See how that one's bent right there? That's because it's a prop knife, as it should be when you're practicing blades like that. Uh, this sequence actually was one of the better ones in the movie, when they're talking about taking dudes out with blades. I think what they showed there would actually be quite effective, if not overkill. I thought it was a little bit overkill, LT's techniques, but again, I'm not the end-all experts for knife fighting. Anyways, these two connect, and he learns all the fighting. Again, we see the prop knife. It's kind of bent there. That's the K-Bar. I think the K-Bar, incidentally, is a much better knife for fighting than the Tom Brown tra Tracker would ever be. And again, Aaron learns his skill well. He becomes quite the knife dude. How would you like to be this dude in the movie? Hey, man, I was in a movie. Really? What, what part did you play? Well... Um, I was the guy that, um, LT put the blade under his throat and, like, was showing how to kill people. Oh, yeah, I saw you in that. That, you really were good. That was a good movie. That's funny. Anyways, that's a sequence there. They're teaching him. So, that's a flashback that LT's character has about how he taught him to be such an effective assassin primarily with a blade. And that's another criticism against the movie, is we don't see any gun action, really. We see these two clowns, both LT's character 
and Aaron's character preferring a knife. And I, I think a knife is a backup weapon, not a primary weapon. That's insanity. Um, you want to go head to head with some dude with a blade, I just think you're going to get cut, for one, and you might lose a finger or two. You're much better. You're much better off, I think, creating distance and using a gun. And we hear uh, Tommy Lee's characters, by the, or Tommy Lee Jones character, LT, of course, saying, "I don't like guns. You know, that's not good." And so, but he's more than willing to take a knife and chop up dudes with a knife, i.e., Aaron later in the movie. So again, we see the hypocrisy and foolishness of Hollywood, how they promote a very brutal knife, and they kind of say bad, bad on the gun. Anyways, the movie progresses, and it get, just gets even more ridiculous. Yes, I'm down to two stars for this movie. Uh, one of them is, is while Aaron's character is being chased, okay, flash forward in the movie, he was captured, he got away, now he's being chased, there's helicopters in the air, there's all kinds of FBI agents, there's dogs, there's cars everywhere, hundreds and hundreds of agents looking for him. What does he do? He builds a fire. Right in the middle of the search area. Okay, and why is he building a fire? Because he needs to forge a knife. Now you heard right. This just is ridiculous. He's forging a knife in the middle of the search for him. And by the way, in the movie, he does it within about a minute. Okay, yeah, and there's his blade. And of course, what is he going to forge? With great determination and tenacity, Aaron manages to forge yet another Tom Brown tracker knife. Amazing. There he is, forged. He had no tools whatsoever. He had to make his fire out of flint and steel, and yet somehow we're supposed to believe he forged a blade during the search. You know, never mind if he's this incredible operative. Dude, why wouldn't you have all kinds of weapons on you? Seriously. All kinds of pistols and knives. How hard would it have been to prepare ahead just, just a little bit and have some weapons on you? Nope. He has to forge a knife from a discarded spring from a truck. <sighs> All right. Well, that's ridiculous. And, oh, by the way, across the woods, there's Tommy Lee Jones. What's he making? He's making a flint knife. The deadly 2.5-inch variety. Yeah, that's uh, that's a lot of blade, Tommy. Uh, I would. That's what I would be making if guys are chasing me. And I know I'm going to be dueling hand-to-hand -hand combat with a dude that has a bigger blade than me. I'm going to... For I'm going to go ahead and chip out a two and a half inch flint knife. I think that's an excellent choice. Unbelievable. So, of course, these two meet. And there's this big encounter. They fight. I'm tired of pacing images. Uh, the bad guy uh, loses. Tommy Lee Jones is injured, but good vanquishes evil. That's the movie, The Hunted. Well, then we have the Blade Industry jump on that movie. Now, I do not fault Blade, Mag uh, Blade Magazine at all. They're in the business of selling magazines, just like the producers are in the business of selling movies. I don't fault either entity. I have no issues with it at all. But you have to be able to discern the hype and break through to the truth. And what we saw in the movie The Hunted is complete and total hogwash. It's hogwash. The things that were performed with the blade and imbuing this blade with somehow some type of magical qualities that it was able to throw faster and farther than any other blade, kill federal agents in a single swoop. I'm talking about the woods ones that came after him. You know, it's just nonsense. And I'm going to talk about the specifics of the Tom Brown tracker, why I, why I feel it is indeed nonsense. But it's anatomy of hype in its purest form. And it's not just The Hunted. It's not just Blade Magazine. There's a lot of hype about different blades. But people who watch something in a movie are spellbound. They see it on the screen and their logic tells them there's no way that can happen. And yet, when they see something like that big old hole in that tree, they want to believe it. They want to believe that a blade could do that. They want to believe that a blade could imbue them with invincible-like qualities, like Aaron's character. That's what they want to believe. But in actuality, indeed, it's hogwash. That it's just a knife, the Tom Brown tracker, and it has a lot of limitations as it is designed. This is one of the many colorations and versions that are probably out there, and I think it's a good-looking knife. Like I said earlier, it's visually appealing, but it has limitations. That's part one 
of Nothing Fancy's Anatomy of Hype, the Tom Brown Tracker Knife. Stay tuned. Here comes part two. You'll like that.